This episode is brought to you by Ariston Specialties in Bloomfield, Connecticut, makers of amazing olive oils and other Greek delights. Check them out online at aristonspecialties.com. That's Ariston, A-R-I-S-T-O-N, specialties.com. At this moment, all over the world, if you can afford it, people are thinking, what's for dinner? So some of us will eat pizza uh, or at a diner. Uh, Some will stop at a local favorite restaurant or we'll eat uh, following our religious traditions. So this show is about what's for dinner tonight. And how will you pull it together? That's coming right up. The All-Stars are here. Chris Prosperi of Metro Beats Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut. Our editor, Carl Franklin in Quaker Hill. Joanne Church in New London. And our mascot, my beloved dog, Bon Bon. Because I um, I know Bon Bon. I rescued him from the uh, Caribbean island of Bonaire, and that's how he got his name. And Mm. let me tell you, that was quite an adventure. So, okay, Carl Franklin. Hey. What's for dinner tonight, buddy? And how wow. are you going to make it? <laughs> oh, it's in the oven already. Uh, I went in the oven at 11.30. Basically, I was in the supermarket the other day, and I was looking for a good cut of pork, and they were selling half shoulder roasts, like half a pork butt. Mm-hmm. Oh. But it's really like a quarter of a pork butt. It's just enough for dinner, right? So uh, last night, I covered it with salt with Himalayan pink salt, in case anybody cares. Um, (laughs) Covered it with salt and put it open on a rack in the fridge. And that does magic things to me. Chris is nodding his Mm -hmm. head, right? Doesn't that magicify me? Yeah. Kind of cures the outside, dries it, gets it ready for the oven. Yeah. Yeah. So then I call it. Yeah, it's magic. So then this morning, I got a little Cuisinart, just a little one, you know, and I I put in, I don't know, five cloves of garlic and the juice of a lemon, the zest of that same lemon, four or five sprigs of rosemary, which I pulled off the stock, of course, and uh, olive oil. But I didn't add any salt because things got a lot (laughs) of salt already, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, whizzed that all up, and that turned into almost like a mayonnaise, right? And so I just Mm -hmm. slathered that thing all the way. I I put it in a roasting (laughs) oven bag. Have you used these things before? Yeah, I have. They're magic. I I did for turkey once 100 years ago. Yeah, turkey. That's how I did it. Yeah. Yeah. So they still have air inside, and it kind of poofs mm-hmm. up like a balloon. You yeah. tie it, and but it but it cooks and it browns, um, and then it keeps all the juice in you know in the bag. So that's go, that's a five hour roast at two fifty. Nice, and I'm going to pull that out <laughs> in an hour or so, and it's nice. Be, oh and what, so, Carl, oh. what would the texture be? What would the texture be? What, oh. what, yeah, what's it going to yeah. be? Yeah, so here's what I do. I pull it out after about five hours, maybe four and a half hours. I took, I put the juice in a, um, you know, in a in a saucepan, add some butter and whiz it up to make a gravy. But then I put it back in the oven. I crank it up to like 400 for just about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes just to crisp it up on the outside. Out of the bag. Uh. Yeah, out of the bag. Yeah. Yeah, to crisp it up. Yep. And so it's a crispy on the on the on the top. If you do it right, the the crackling, the skin. Oh yeah. It's going to be crispy. Oh, crunchy God. almost, right? <laughs> You're not doing so the pulled crispy. pork? You're not no, shredding it. No, I I'm not a puller. I don't, I don't like pulled pork. I like to pull it with my teeth when I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> like nice big chunks so of it. Oh, yeah. I'm with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pour that oh. gravy over there, get some green yep. beans or something. and oh, yeah. yeah, potatoes. Yep. Yeah, some mashed potatoes. Yeah. yeah, or roasted, roasted potatoes. Yeah. Mm. Put a little duck fat. The mashed potatoes can hold the gravy more, though. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. Agreed. That's true. <laughs> okay, so let me see. What should we do now? How about um, a joy in church? What are you going to do? Well, listen, I'm so happy that Carl brought this up because on Sunday, I got a pork shoulder and use the crock pot. And every recipe I checked online said to put it on low for eight hours. So the first pork I bought was like 12 pounds for for, for shoulder. And I thought, I'm going to bring it to my neighbors, to my friends. I opened it. 
it was bad. I had to go back uh, to the store. Then I went to another store and had the butcher take like the 20 pound one and I got like four, four pounds. Put it in the crock pot, every recipe, eight hours low. After mm. six hours, I thought it's, it's going to be done. And I took it out <laughs> and it was done. I mean, I oh, let yeah. it rest, but then I couldn't shred it. Like I was uh, going for the pulled pork and I had made a barbecue sauce and th- that's all I cooked it in was. So it needed those sauce. extra two hours. Is what you're saying. Did it to that's to pull I didn't it, yes. know. Yeah, totally. Probably. Yeah. So if you're going to slice it, six was probably enough. If you're doing it like Carl was doing it, right? right. That would be enough. Does, so because does it, it melt? So I noticed oh, there was yeah. still. Yeah. fat marbled in so that mm-hmm. extra two hours would have melted that fat well it's more about the collagen that stuff that connects the connective tissue tissue that actually after a long time at a certain temperature turns to gelatin so it Beautiful. kind of yes melts is a good term yeah. it melts the, the toughness the things that make the meat a little on the tough side that collagen it actually melts that and makes it soft yummy and then you can pull it sticky. What do you do with it then, Joanne? So let's say it's, it's done. I ended up slicing it and freezing it in different slices. Wait, can I tell you the next day for lunch, I had sliced pork, but on white bread with mayonnaise. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I was like, oh, I skipped the mayonnaise. Oh, on no. <laughs> the mayonnaise was what I was so happy about. Yeah. But oh, I that's... have to say about the, my mom used to make prime rib to this day. I love prime rib. I don't make oh, it, but I maybe I will. Too. And yeah. she would just slather salt on all sides yes. and then put it in the oven. And it never mm-hmm. tasted salty, right. but it did come up with a crispy, Crust Ed, on the so outside. that's so interesting. Yes. You know, it's really hard to find prime rib in a restaurant. It's not on menus anymore. Mm. No, you know, it used to be on every menu in Connecticut. Right. I asked them at Longhorn here in yep. Connecticut, why'd you take prime rib off? And they said, because we weren't selling enough and it was, yeah. we were throwing too much of it out. Yeah, because you cook oh, the whole thing no. at once and then you slice it. And if you sell it all like we used to, you know, in the 80s and early 90s, where, like I said, every Saturday night, I think every restaurant in Connecticut did prime rib because you knew you could blow through it and sell it all. And now, I don't know, mm-hmm. I, I love it, but people, I guess, don't want it as much anymore. They like a grilled well, steak. Or- do you remember, I mean, you the, they would bring you almost a platter instead of a plate. Yeah. And it would yes. be like hanging yes. off the edges yes. of the plate. I, I mean, forgot so about that. Gigantic. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can so- remember going to places. Places that would do king cuts and queen cuts and prince, c- and the king cut. You're right; would be like falling almost falling off the off sides the of the plate. It was so big. The so, turkey dish. <laughs> so I had this idea, and it's not a new idea, but it, nobody does it. And that is, you know, being in the restaurant business is hard, Chris. You know, because you end up throwing a lot of food away if people don't come. But what if you could you could make that more efficient by ordering your dinner ahead of time? You know, like when you make a reservation, if I was going to make a reservation for Friday night and it's Tuesday, you know, I'd what what what's wrong with going through the menu and saying this is what I'm going to order? I mean, it, some people maybe want the spontaneity of being in there and I get that, but but especially things like that are special orders like prime rib or whatever, you know? If they if if you knew, oh, we're going to have 10 prime ribs on Friday night, I'm buying a side of beef. <laughs> yeah, I think I think maybe the next generation coming through that's more used to using technology. Mm. I think you might start seeing stuff like that, right? Because they love ordering stuff on their phones and ordering or right and ordering it ahead of time wouldn't be a problem. But I think most people that you know, older people like me, we like going in and looking. <laughs> yeah, at the you like oh, even I though like- even <laughs> though they have proven and 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 these uh, think tanks that do studies of restaurants have proven that I, I don't know what it is. If you eat in a regular restaurant that you eat in all the time, so you know the menu, that you pretty much decide already what you're going to eat on the car ride there. Yeah, right. That it's yeah. Our, if it's a regular restaurant that you eat in. I want to hear the specials. Yeah, yeah I that's true. true. Most people decide ahead yeah. of time, and you can tell them the specials. But, I mean, I, I know even on a Saturday night exactly what we're going to sell. Hey, do you remember when special meant special price? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, I don't even want to talk about prices anymore. Oh. Uh, hey, um, do you remember what was the name of that restaurant in Wallingford, C- Connecticut? And Ooh. it was um, a place where you'd get 
uh, you, you know, all kinds of dinners and stuff. But the thing that they had that was so incredible were popovers. I oh, love popovers. Oh, and every restaurant that did prime rib used to serve popovers <laughs> that's, that's what because made me we think would, of it. we would yeah. take, the, believe it or not, Faith, we would take the fat off the bottom of the roasting yeah. pan, the beef fat off the bottom of the roasting oh, pan. Yeah. And we would put that in those popover pin, tins. Like they're like big, heavy muffin tins yeah. and you would put that boil or that sizzling fat in there and then you dump your batter into that hot fat and throw it in. oh my gosh so good probably not good for you but so good it sounds like yorkshire pudding is that the same pop over is a mini yorkshire pudding yeah and yeah. again 100 years ago we used to do yorkshire pudding which is just <laughs> the same pop over batter in a large saute a pan the same pan. thing we put the beef fat in the bottom of that and dump the whole batter in that right. and then throw it in the oven and poof right back up like and a pat of shoe, see, right? Yeah, and then you cut it into like wedges and yeah. serve that with the prime rib. Okay. Wow. Well, should we take a break before yeah. we continue? Because what do you hear how elaborate my thing is? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with more of the Food Schmooze Party at faithmiddleton.com. This is the Food Schmooze Party at faithmiddleton.com, and uh, the, the the gang is here, as always. We've got um, Chris Prosperi of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut. Joanne Church is in New London. Carl Franklin is in Quaker Hill. And we're talking about, well, I thought we were talking about <laughs> what's for dinner tonight, <laughs> but we've done about 80 subjects. It's really uh, fun, though. Um, okay, so here's my thing. Um I did what I do um, many, many days, and I went to um, the Guilford Green, which is downtown, with my dog, Bon Bon, and, uh, you know, and he sniffs every blade of grass, and he goes crazy <laughs> walking around the screen, and then I take him for um, his special thing, which is um, at this restaurant called Baloo's. Uh, his special thing is meatballs, and so I order him one or two meatballs. And then um, I order all the time the crab cakes there because they're delicious. And they're quite large. And so there's two very l large ones. So for tonight, and I always say to them, may I have the to-go uh, thing, please? And they, so I take one home. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, that's what I'm having tonight. I'm having my crab cake <laughs> so, nice. and a glass of wine. That's, that's, that's it. Sounds that's really good. all I need. I'm not doing yeah. salad. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just going to sit and reheat <laughs> my crab cake. How would you reheat that? Like in a pan with butter or no, something? No, I just or? put it straight into the microwave. Oh, okay. Need an air fryer. Yeah, I was just thinking no, about it. No, I am, I I am don't sold need, on the We air did fryer. this last time. Yeah, yeah I know. Any I know. more appliances. <laughs> but it is cold. Cool I, I, I just That's know. what you call a callback, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, so let me see. I, so that's it, right? This Chris. is what we're no, I can go. Do. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Oh, my God. I yeah, thought yeah. you went. I'm sorry. Right. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. So what we're having for dinner tonight is I butchered a whole top round today, which is a big chunk of meat. Mm. And as I was doing it, I made, trimmed out little pieces and made some soup. And then I made a big Irish stew and I did that. Mm. And then I was getting down to the eye round, which is part of this whole muscle. It's like almost looks like a tube, right? It's the mm -hmm. eye. Um, and I took that and I trimmed it nicely. I cut it into two pieces. And then I took it and I chopped up some garlic and I just rolled this thing and chopped garlic, <laughs> salt, paprika, and mm -hmm. onion powder. Wow. And I just literally rolled it in there. And as I was thinking about putting this in the oven and making a roast beef, I was like, you know what? I had smoked some stuff yesterday and the smoker was still outside so i was like you know what i'm gonna get the smoker going and i have a little box smoker so it doesn't really cook but it adds the smoke flavor so nice. i put this in the smoker for about an hour and just let it roll and then i took it out and put it in a very low oven at like i think it was at like 300 and i just let it in there and i roasted it till it got to about 120 internal temperature just checked it with my little thermometer awesome. took it out let it rest for about 20 minutes 
all the juices go back in it and it's just redistributed. Mm-hmm. And then we sliced it and oh my gosh, we, that, like I said, I had two pieces. Half of the first piece is already gone by oh. people walking by the cutting board. And I was just slicing wow. it going, wait a minute, it's I wanted beautiful. to take a picture of it. And they were just like oh. grabbing it with their fingers. Wow. So wow. smoked roast beef with some mashed potatoes. And then I made a broth, you know, with some of the scraps of that meat too. So I'm going to make a gravy and pour that over the top of mm. the mashed potatoes. Oh. Wow. That's so good. Smoked yeah, roast great. beef. Yeah, put it on the website, Carl. I was going to say, if you if you go to faithmiddleton.com, you'll see pictures oh. of some of this stuff. Right. And this is oh, uh, episode 29, What's for Dinner? Yeah. So just go in there <laughs> and, and you'll was, see the I pictures. I was wondering, like you guys, like I remember being a kid and on the weekend, like a Friday night dinner or a Saturday night dinner, my mom would make roast beef and we'd mm. all sit at the table. And I don't know if this is even done anymore, you know, where the roast beef would come in. It was a small piece. We were a family of five. So maybe it was like two or three pound piece of roast beef. Mm. And my dad would get out the, the carving set. You know, everyone had like the carving, <laughs> the knife and the little, the in fancy little box. fork. And yeah. dad would like carve it at the table. Mom made mashed potato, fresh yes. mashed potatoes. And then you'd pour the, it wasn't even gravy, right? You would just take the Juice. drippings, yep. the au jus, and just drizzle that over the top. And my mm. mom would do like garlic green beans or something. Mm. And, oh my gosh, that was like the best dinner of the week. So yeah, I guess I'm wondering, do people still do like the we roast do. beef, slice it nice and thin, put it over yeah. mashed potatoes? And it's like the best dinner from memory anyway. That's got to come back. I think people yeah. should. Yeah. Oh, so good. And, and the top round and the eye round, they're not, they're expensive, but they're not expensive like we were talking about the prime rib, right? Yeah. The rib roast. I mean, oh my gosh, I heard stories the last mm-hmm. holiday of what people paid for a six oh. bone rib roast and I almost oh. fell out of my chair. You're talking about <laughs> sirloin and it's very yeah. tasty, but it needs yes. that that time yeah. to break down a little bit because yeah. it's tougher That's than right. rib, eat, rib eye or whatever. Yeah, and you mm-hmm. slice it thin and you yeah. roast it slow. Slow, right, yeah. three hundred, no more than three fifty, and roast it nice and slow. And the most important, I always say this: faith knows, let it rest a yes. long time. Long time. If you think ten minutes, that's not long enough. Let it rest. Chris, let, let me ask my typical question, mm-hmm. which is: it seems like um, a, an urban legend to me that if you let it rest, it the, it, the juices absorb back into. <laughs> It just seems like that's not possible. That's true. But you say it it is absolutely true. Absolutely true. Because remember, the definition, the scientific definition of cooking is removal of moisture. So as you're heating things, the moisture in that in that piece of uh, roast beef, in that top round, in that eye round, the, as it's heating, that moisture is being forced out of it, right? Does that make sense? It's sort of like moving out of it's it. That's to why the edge. When, yeah, to the edge. And that's why when you slice something and you don't let it rest, you see that brown edge around the outside. And if you look at, at the picture Carl's going to post, right, on the on the Faith Milton website, you'll see when I took it and I let it rest for 10, 15, 20 minutes mm. and I sliced it, it is medium rare, right to the edge. And people always ask me like, oh, it never comes out like that when I do it. Mm. That's because when you do it at home, and I've seen people, my parents used to do it too. As soon as it comes out of the oven, it goes onto a a cutting board (laughs) and it's sliced in seconds after it comes out of the oven. And then there's this huge pool pool of of juice juice on the cutting board. Yeah. 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 And if you look on the picture- And it's dry. Look on the picture. I, I took the picture on the cutting board. There is no juice on the cutting board. There's mm. just the smear mm. of the garlic and, you know, the paprika on the cutting board, but there, uh. the juice is all distributed within that piece of meat because you let it rest. So I would say 15 minutes before you put it in the oven, leave it out, let it warm up, not to room temperature, but, you know, just let it warm, let it warm, get warmer than refrigerator temperature before you put it in the oven. And then same 15, 20 minutes after it comes out of the oven, let it rest. Even if it's not that long. Wait a minute. Yeah. What yeah. keeps it? What, what keeps Keeps it from, um, you know, what we call carryover cooking. You know, where it keeps cooking. It's going to. It's, it's going to. That's why I always pull it but at that, 120. Yeah, 120. I pull so, it at 120, which is very almost rare raw. It's too rare, yeah. You, yeah. And it will go from 120. That little piece went from 120. And it wasn't a very big piece, right? Because I cut it in two, right? So it was two chunks. And maybe they were a pound and a half each. So instead of roasting it whole, I, I wanted two smaller pieces. Um, but that went from 120 to 126 by the time I sliced it. So it went up. 
So I got a call back to the Christmas show when we mm-hmm. talked about what we did for Christmas last year, not all right, mm-hmm. year before last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I did that smoked rib roast. Yep. And just to remind everybody, what I did was I, I you know, covered it in herbs and salt and, and mm-hmm. smoked it to 120. So yep. I low smoked it to, until it got to 120. Mm-hmm. I pulled it off. I wrapped it in foil, uh, no, uh, not foil, um, butcher paper, and then foil, and then towels. And I kept the <laughs> thermometer in it. And it turns yeah, out sure. my family was late. My kids were late. Mm-hmm. But as it was sitting there resting, probably for an hour, an hour and a half, yeah. the temperature went up to like 135. Yep. And it was perfect when, yeah. when we cut that thing. Yeah. And it wasn't well, cold. Uh-huh. It was 135. No. The temperature yeah. went up. I just sent one of our servers home with some roast beef for her husband. And I sliced the roast beef and I wrapped it in a little package. And she goes, oh, if I heat this up, it'll you know, get well done. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's why I wrapped it separately. Heat up the mashed potatoes, heat up the yeah. sauce, take the roast beef, which is room temperature. She was going home and going to heat it up right away. Yeah. Right. So take that roast beef, leave it to the side, heat the mashed potatoes, heat the sauce, take the roast beef, put it room temperature, put it on top of the hot mashed yep. potatoes and then pour it. the hot uh, sauce beautiful. over the top. And that's enough mm. because I sliced it, you know, eighth of an inch thick so it's not like these thick slabs mm-hmm. it's this mm-hmm. thin little you know sliver almost and that'll heat it all the way through and it'll I keep it immediately starving I know. Yeah, me too now. I oh, and, I, and i've got that roast beef in again. the other room i'm gonna go and i hope they don't eat it all uh, hour oh till wow this, this is really fun <laughs> this is really fun so um we're here um all the time now you know every week we're doing a brand new one of these uh, food schmooze parties so just go to faithmiddleton.com or tell your friends or family, no matter where they live in the world, to join us and have a good time. So pull up a seat at our table, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. Waiting for the summer to come.